What is up, everybody? My name is TJ Gleason. I am a podcaster, a YouTuber, and a documentary filmmaker. Right now, I'm in the process of working on my new series where I'm doing documentaries with business owners, musicians, and much, much more. And today, we are filming with Randy Bates, the owner of the Bates Motel, 29 Years of Terror. Throughout the last couple of years, I have done many projects with Randy Bates, like a one-on-one -on -one interview and a how-to video with this makeup artist. He has also featured a couple of well-known celebrities like Bam Margera and Ryan Dunn of Jackass. So today, we are headed to Bates Motel and we are going to start this documentary. All right, guys. So my first rule of business is talking to the owner of Aristotle Farms. So I'm literally like two feet away from Aristotle Farms right now. We're just about to turn in just a couple seconds. Farms. Base Motel. All right guys, so I found my source of where I'm gonna do this whole little documentary. Randy Bates is a really like in that spot over there. So we're gonna film this little documentary with Randy Bates. I wanna get this thing started. Um, so, it's the first weekend of open season and uh, this is going to be one big documentary. I'm Randy Bates and I run the Bates Motel on Haunted Hayride, a haunted attraction located outside of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So, my whole life I've always had uh, jobs. And started businesses and things like that when I was uh, about 12 years old. I used to help one of the local farmers bale hay. Got paid three cents a bale uh, to bale it and another two cents a bale to put it in the barn. So I was making five cents a bale. Big money back in 1969. Um, put myself through college installing car stereos and uh, working as a security guard at uh, the Harley-Davidson factory in York. And uh, got out, got a job as a uh, uh, at a burglar alarm company installing burglar alarm systems. Uh, 1991 I went to another company doing sales work and started my own burglar alarm company which I ended up selling in 2000 just to run the, uh, the haunt. And uh, you know, I've had other businesses over the years installing uh, sprinkler systems for lawns, lawns um, you know, the uh, remodeling basements and, and uh, things like that. So I've always had something going on, always had some sort of business going on. And, you know, up until 2000, I always had at least two jobs, sometimes three. And that just, like, paid for, like, the whole attraction and all that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's all help, help pay the bills. And... But I want to ask you a couple questions. Now, you started this in 1991, correct? Right. So when you first started, you told me it was a hay ride, I believe, at first. Mm -hmm. Now, how did, did you imagine that it was going to be as big as it is 29 years later? So we started out in 1991 as a uh, haunted hayride. Uh, four wagons, about 25 actors, uh, and uh, some pretty cheesy sets. And uh, 29 years later, I can't believe it's my full-time job. It supports... Uh, at least 10 or 12 full-time employees, and, and it also... Uh, we have over 320 full or part-time employees. Um, Did you think it was going to fail in the beginning? 
I never thought that this was going to fail. Uh, just it's just something you don't think about when you're starting a business. You don't want to worry about it's going to fail. You know, it was started out more as a, uh, a social event for uh, my friends, my family. Uh, we'd drink beer, we'd go out and scare people. It was only open for five or six nights. So it started out as a real low-key social event. And uh, over the years, it's built up into a uh, full-blown multi-million dollar business. So 29 years later, you have a multi-millionaire multi-millionaire business. What do you expect in the next 10 years? Do you think it's going to be, because I know you guys have more like, you know, you added new things. You added the axe throwing this year, zombie laser tag, and you added like, escape rooms. What do you want in the next 10 years? So it's a multi-million dollar business, not a multi-millionaire business. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it makes a lot of money, but it also costs a ton of money. You have no idea. I mean, my payroll last year was like $900,000, which is crazy. But, uh, you know, it, I think uh, my passion is starting new businesses. You know, I guess a friend of mine called me a serial entrepreneur, and I love the idea of starting something new and watching it grow and, you know, hopefully it becomes successful. So when we opened up our escape rooms and our laser tag system, uh, my son, son Ben, uh, is a partner with me, and we've built that business up to where it's actually doing very well. Um, I'm sure we're always looking for the next best cool thing down the road, and we'll jump into that. This year we added uh, axe throwing to the uh, haunt. We've added uh, a zombie laser tag hunt uh, as a five-minute uh, walkthrough. And in November, the first weekend in November, we're going to do a full-blown zombie laser tag hunt in our haunted trail, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's a 25-minute walkthrough, uh, 40 live zombies that you can shoot. Uh, it should be a, a really cool event. Now, was scaring always your passion? Scaring people always your passion? Yeah, my passion was always scaring people. I didn't really care much about dressing up for Halloween, things like that. But, uh, boy, I love to scare the heck out of my sisters <laughs> and friends and things like that. And uh, I still terrify my grandkids. Uh, scared my wife today, which was pretty funny, uh, and it's become a legacy because a lot of my kids have, gr they all grew up with the, the Halloween event, and they've worked so many different jobs. They've worked scary people, they've worked concession stands, security, uh, ticket booth, um, gift shops, so on like that. So it's true family business, and now I've got grandkids that are coming along. They're out in the haunted trail scaring people. And uh, it's, uh, you know, the third generation of uh, scaring the crap out of people. So pretty much, like, it's a big family-oriented business, and it's going to branch out into something. It branched out from something that was really small to something that's really big now. And uh, do you think in the next, like, 20 years when, like, you're, let's say you're about 90, let's go a little bit. Uh, do you think your kids and your grandkids and their kids will take over and keep this legacy going throughout the next couple of uh, generations? So the, the game plan is to preserve the farm. Uh, you know, my mom was uh, uh, huge into uh, preservation and uh, she wanted the farm to be handed down to me and then to my kids and so on, which is what we've worked on. And you know, most family businesses, uh, either the kids want to get involved or they don't give a damn about it and they just want to go do their own thing, which is fine. And I've talked to a lot of business owners that, you know, their kids don't want anything with the business, they're going to sell it and retire. Uh, my, four out of my six kids are intimately involved in our business. Um, it's part of their life, it's part of their, um, where they live here, um, you know, it's, it's their uh, income. Uh, and they do a great job at it, they have a passion for it. And that's what you have to have to have a business like this, you've got to have a passion. You know, really want to make it work. Um, you know, you met my daughter Veronica. She's uh, uh, he runs the uh, concession stand and the gift shop. My son Ben is basically the general manager for the haunted attractions. He's also my partner with the escape rooms and the laser tag and the mobile uh, events that we're doing. Uh, my wife is uh, you know basically the CFO, the chief financial officer for all three businesses. So she's writing checks paying the bills, doing the payroll for three different businesses at the same time. I don't know how she does it. Um, and, uh, you know, the kids are involved and the grandkids are into it as well, which is really cool. And your wife supported you through the whole thing? Oh, yeah, my wife supported the whole, the whole way. Um, 
She might not like it a lot of times because it is a ton of work. And uh, to be honest with you, if my kids weren't involved in this business and they didn't really care about the farm and everything else, this place would have been sold and I'd be sitting on the beach in Hawaii right now. <laughs> so let's talk about, um, or no, I'm sorry, Penhurst Asylum. Randy Bates has also worked with Penhurst Asylum, another haunted attraction down in Spring City, Pennsylvania. He's worked there for about maybe a year or so, but here's what he had to say about that. So let's talk about Penhurst Asylum. You partnered with them, or you started that, from what I was, from what I remember you telling me. How did that happen? So in two, late 2009, uh, a couple of gentlemen approached me that were uh, representing the owner of the Penhurst property. And they said, you know, we, we, we think you're the, uh, the haunted Halloween guy in the area and we want you to partner up with us and open up a haunted attraction at Penhurst Asylum. And at the time, uh, the uh, Travel Channel was shooting three TV shows uh, for uh, the America Haunts Group, which is a national group of haunted attractions, which uh, myself and four other places uh, started. And they wanted to shoot something at Penhurst. And they wanted my permission to do it because we, they were using our America Haunts information logo and we told them who they could shoot. And I said, well, if they let me in as a partner up there, I'll let them shoot the show at Penhurst. So they asked me to write a business plan, which I'd never done before. I wrote a, it took me three months to write a business plan, soup to nuts, every nail, bolt, screw, paintbrush, everything to possibly turn us into a haunted attraction. Uh, it was about a little less than half a million dollars, soup to nuts, to open up. Um, I told my partner up there that uh, we needed 25,000 people to come through the first year just to break even and pay the bills. And uh, it was unheard of in the industry to have 40,000 people the first year. Um, so we've, we upgraded over the next couple of years. It was a huge success. Um, in uh, 2015, the property owner um, was bankrupt from other dealings, other businesses. Uh, all the businesses that he owned, the only one that made any money was Penhurst. Wow. So um, we were going to buy him out. He did not accept the, uh, the amount and uh, ended up kind of running away with the money. So 2016, with my hands, done deal with this, done with the Penhurst Asylum, and uh, just concentrated on this, and that's when we decided to open up the escape rooms and, and the laser tag in Westchester. So after talking with Randy Bates, I wanted to get more information from his kids, so I'm right here with his daughter right now, Veronica. I want to ask her about Bates Motel. So, this has been around for 28 years, and your dad started the whole thing, has all his kids involved. What is it like being, like, what is it like with your father being the owner of a company that turned into, like, something, like, 10 times bigger than you could ever imagine? What is it like? Uh, it's very cool. Um, growing up, seeing it, it was pretty much just a fun backyard playground area. Um, and for it to grow into something so big, um, to see him so successful is awesome. And the fact that we're all family doing it, um, all brothers and sisters, my mom and dad, it's just a whole family uh, business that so keeps going. And um, it's just, it's blown up to something that we never expected. Now, do you think in the next, like, let's say, 40 years. Do you think this business is uh, still going to be around? Yeah, I think so. We have, there's uh, 18 grandkids and they're all from um, six months to 15. So I think the grandkids are going to keep it running and keep it going. I think it's going to still be a family business for sure. What do you, what do you expect in the next, like, let's say for year number 40, do you think there's going to be more attractions, more like laser tag? What do you think is going to branch out? Yeah, I think, it, I think that's what's happening now, too. It's the laser tag. If people want to do things that are just a couple minutes long. They want to do more. People want bigger things. We Even just our concession stand, is it's, we have a lot of fried food. I'm sure before you know it, it's going to be more stuff. Um, you know, just the bigger, the better. All right. Well, thank you for uh, talking, and uh, we'll go from there. So uh, do you have anything to say for the uh, 2019 uh, haunt year? 
I think it's going to be a great year. The guys have worked really hard, um, just getting everything prepared and ready. And, and we've had a, a good last year, but this year I think it's going to be better. Just everybody working together and bigger than better. All right. All right. Well, thank you for uh, talking. You're welcome. All right. Perfect. Now, who are you? I'm Ben Bates. And I'm the VP of Operations at Bates Motel. And you've been doing this for as long as your dad's been doing this. That's correct? right. 29 years. 29 years. Yep. So, when your dad started this business, what did you think of it? I was a baby. But, I mean, I grew up into it and it's always been fun. It's always been fun to have see people come through and get scared and how far it's evolved over the years. What do you think it's going to be like in the next five years? I think this industry is just keeping to grow, so there's new attractions coming out, new ways to do things, new special effects we're using, and it's just going to keep growing. Now, do you think that your kids and your kids' kids are going to like grow this, uh, grow this haunted attraction in the next like 40 years? I think so. I think my kids and all their cousins will just keep it going. What do you expect to see this October? Do you see, do you see any like big things happening for you guys? Um, there's a lot of new lighting effects coming out. Um, a lot of new pyro stuff, so we'll be playing with a lot of that next in the next year or two. All right. And uh, what do you expect for uh, this year's haunt? I think it's going to be a great year. The weather looks really nice. It's been beautiful. We have some really great actors, and uh, the reviews we've gotten so far are awesome. We're really having a good time. All right. Thank you. Go. Cool. Hi, my name is Drew Bates. Uh, we're at the Bates Motel. Um, I run the security part of the uh, Bates Motel um, just to make sure everyone's having a good time, everyone's safe, and there's no issues. So the customers can enjoy their uh, visit here. So is this where mostly you stay throughout the whole like, yep. or the whole one of the attractions? Yep, so inside here, help run the ticket booth, and then um, on the outside, you know, take care of any security issues that, that may come up. So you guys have footage like all around. You guys have footage all around like this whole area to make sure and you make sure it's secured and make sure everyone's yep. safe and stuff. Yeah, there's camera systems on all the events. There's camera systems all around the ticket booths. Uh, there's camera systems out in the parking lot, um, so we can monitor everything that's going on. And if anything comes up and there's an issue, we can go back, check the tapes, and just make sure everything's uh, you know up to speed. So, what do you expect for this year, 29th uh, year? The 29th year, we're, uh, we're expecting really good crowds. We always put on a really good show. Um, and uh, the security staff and, and everyone here is uh, ready for a great season. So, it should be a good time. All right. Well, thank you. Yep. Thank you. Have a good time. And, uh, So after a long talk with Randy, Drew, Ben, and Veronica, we got to explore the whole place and how everything operates. So during this tour, we got to explore the security room where cameras are everywhere at the attraction making sure everyone is safe and having a good time. We also got to explore the concession stands where they hand out all the good food and drinks for all the kids and the people hanging out. We also explored the makeup booth, and we got a glimpse of Veronica making funnel cake. So we have Randy's on Veronica. Huh? What are you making right now? This is a mix for funnel cake and for our fried Oreos. This is the batter. Now, the, I used to, okay. like, I love funnel cake and I love your fried Oreos. Now, like, have you been doing this for long, though? This is my third year running this stand. So, okay. yeah. It's fun. <laughs> a lot of work, I bet, too. A lot of work. A lot of prepping. A lot to clean up. <laughs> Randy was also nice enough to let us see the makeup booth. Let us see how all of the monsters were created. How all the makeup is done. He also let us see all the actors and actresses get ready before the big night. And then we got to talk to Cosmo, who is a makeup artist. Hey, what's up? I'm Cosmo Mariano. I'm, I'm the head of costumes here at Bates Motel and Haunted Hayride in spooky Gradyville, PA. Um, I basically 
spend most of the year researching, uh, designing, building, buying, and distressing costumes uh, for all three of our attractions and also our new zombie laser tag. And the uh, majority of the job is taking real existing clothes, whether from vintage shops or thrift stores or military surplus or uh, purchased online, putting them through uh, a lot of distressing processes. So fraying ends, using razors to uh, make things look cut up, also using dye and paint, coffee and tea, all kinds of stuff. And then we make our own blood here that can go on the costumes. So that's pretty much the job. Do you have any new designs that you're working on this year? So this year we made a tree man. We took uh, actual castings of tree bark uh, in silicone and then painted in latex and made very detailed copies of, of tree bark so it looks like real tree bark and then we put that all over a, a bodysuit and I made a mask also so he's a, a tree man. Kind of like, it looks kind of like Groot actually when we finished it. So I'm, I'm really excited about that and then we're working on uh, a new uh, swamp monster this week. So bo some bodysuit costumes. We also put out a lot of um, uh, period dresses. So uh, dresses from uh, the mid to late 1800s, that era, uh, replica dresses of that era. So I'm, I'm excited about that because uh, in the, especially in the haunted house, but really in all of the attractions, you want to have a lot of different time periods reflected. So we make sure to have some, Really, the range for Haunted House probably somewhere from like 1840 to about 1960. The, the costumes that you'll see would fall somewhere in that time period. All right. What are you most excited for this year? For this year? I'm excited for the new uh, attractions, the zombie laser tag, the axe throwing trailer. Really excited about the new clown scene that we built. And I hope you get some footage of the facade because it's wild. We put a spinning clown on it. We did like a, a replica carnival building, what's called a Spiegel tent, from like the German tradition of carnivals. And, um, and it has a lot of painted pieces on it. We carved a lot of pieces for it. So I don't know if you could flash a picture of it in the interview, but, but it's wild. It really came out great. Awesome. It's day two of the Bates Motel interview. Now, we got a lot of like good content the first day, so this is the second day. And we're gonna see what we can get into in the next few minutes. So, uh, yeah, let's do it. It's day two of the documentary. And right now, we are walking through one of the newest attractions that he has, Zombie Laser Tag. It's two minutes of awesome footage, so take a look at this.
after exploring zombie laser tag, we got to explore the gift shop where all the shirts, the hoodies, pictures, and much, much more were sold. We also got to interview a customer that has been coming here for the last seven years. How are you guys doing? Awesome, awesome. So how long have you guys been coming here? About six years now. Six years? Seven. Seven years. Seven years? How do you like it? Man, you know I love that it gets better every year. Every, every time we've come, they add on and there's something new. There's a la zombie laser tag and there's one of, oh, the axe door. That's yeah. another new one. And that's really awesome. Man. It just keeps growing, you know, and it keeps coming back. Yeah. You guys gonna come for the next like couple years after that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we're at the drop-off stage now, so we don't have to kind of go on all the rides together. So, but, yeah, we'll be here uh, another. Uh, I can't imagine we won't come back the next ten years. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time. Do you have yeah, anything else to say before uh, for this uh, season? Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween, and make sure you get out here to Base Hotel. Awesome. So that is our documentary. And after seeing every little thing, we got to see Randy Bates one last time before he teases a little something about the 30th year anniversary. About wraps it up for the 2019 season. Uh, we've got a bunch of new stuff this year, but next year is our 30th anniversary and we plan big changes. So come on out and see us. Do you have anything else left to say for uh, this year? Yes. That's it. Come on out and have fun. Get scared. All right. <laughs>